Hey bag makers, today I'm gonna to be talking about the Vivilux 3-in-1 Laser Light, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. The book review will be for a book called Sewing Machine Reference Tool. I have a brand new video for you and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday. Welcome to Social Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a bunch of cool things to tell you about during the show and then stick around for the end. Uh, as usual, a great giveaway. So um, I see Busy Bee is watching from Indiana. Sylvia says, hi Sarah and Danny. Donna's watching from Minnesota. So um, thank you for making time on your Sunday to join me live or if you're watching the recording of the show later on in the week, um, thank you so much for tuning into Social Sunday. So. Just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk to you about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So a friendly reminder, there are two weeks left in the August 2020 challenge and this month's challenge is for making any so sweetness bag that your heart desires in animal fabric so it can be any animal in your fabric um, a fish it could be uh, a unicorn it could be a cow a horse a bird whatever um, two more weeks to enter the challenge the prize is a hundred dollar gift certificate to so sweetness.com and uh, Bronwyn, who, is organized, uh, the, who will be organizing the challenges um, you know, this month and going forward, has told me earlier today that there's about 100 entries so far. So great job, everyone, and keep the entries coming. I'll be announcing the winner of this month's challenge on the live show, and then we'll have another challenge for next month as well. So stay tuned for that. All right, so the notion of the week is something that I bought uh, a few weeks ago, it just seemed like a pretty cool tool. It's called the Vivilux 3-in-1 uh, Laser Light. I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you what, what all came in the package. So this is what, what it looks like. It is um, a, a laser to help you when sewing or machine embroidering, whatever you're doing. There's two different options that I saw for color of light, a uh, red light and a green laser light. I chose the green laser because the packaging when I looked online, it said eye-friendly, so I thought, well, that sounds pretty good. So this is what came in the packaging. First off, it is cordless, and you just need to charge it, plug it into the outlet, kind of like your cell phone. This is what the charger looks like, and it actually has um, this that plugs in, and this goes into the wall, or if you're charging on your computer, something like that, that can be plugged in there. And then this other portion just gets plugged into um, the device. So needs about um, a three hour charge when you first, first before you first use it. And I was reading the instructions, every couple of months you just need to charge it for three hours. So that sounded pretty good to me. It comes with a few handy tools with it. It, it comes with stickers that are helpful for placing your items, you can place the sticker directly on top of the fabric. You can actually sew through the sticker, it just tears away after you stitch through it and there's 100 stickers. Um, you can buy refills if you use up the 100 stickers. There's this little plastic piece that helps with um, laser placement, needle placement, and then it comes with three different shapes of um, laser output. So let me show you what it looks like on the package. So let's see if I can Hold it closer, there you go. Okay, so it comes with a dot, a straight line, and a crosshair, and you just change out the pieces based on what you need. So uh, let me move some of these items out of the way, and then I can show you what each of the... <clears throat> um, I'm gonna have, Danny, I'm gonna have you switch back to the overhead. I'm gonna show a few things first, okay. All right, so this is what the dot looks like on my fabric, and the dot is helpful for um, if you're stitching in the ditch, um, you might be stitching in the ditch for machine sewing binding, free motion quilting, and you can just aim that dot right at the needle and it actually helps to see a little better. I'm rather embarrassed to say that sometimes when I'm sewing, especially with darker fabrics, 
It's hard to see where the needle's coming down exactly, but if you have the laser to point down at your needle, uh, it kind of illuminates that particular area where the needle's um, going in and out of the fabric. So the dot is handy for that. Let me turn it off for a second. Oh, I wanted to mention it has an on-off switch and it also has dim in the middle. I didn't notice, I'm not sure if the red laser would be different, but I didn't notice much of a difference between the on switch and the dim switch. It didn't really look much dimmer to me. Um, so it just, as you can see, it just screws off. And I'm gonna have to get a little baggie or somewhere safe to put these little um, attachments. I'm going to show you, actually let me show you the crosshair first. <clears throat> I pulled out one of my embroidery hoops to show you how the crosshair would be helpful. So on the embroidery hoop, there's markings for where the center of the hoop would be. You can use the crosshair to line up. Obviously, I, I'm not going to be able to, um, yeah, there we go, it's getting closer. Obviously, you need a little bit more time to get it uh, accurately um, aligned, but just a, an example of how you can use the crosshair. And let me switch out and I'll show you, I'm going to pull my sewing machine over here and kind of put it on its side so that I can show you how we can use the, the line for the laser tool. So for the line laser, I thought it would be helpful for sewing a straight line. So perhaps a seam allowance, top stitching, machine quilting, especially if you're in the middle of your quilt and you want to sew, for instance, lines that are one inch apart. This would help with the seam allowance for that. It's also great if you're a quilter for um, half square triangles. So if you're familiar with half square triangles, you know, depending on the pa pattern designer, they usually have you draw a line on the wrong side of the fabric from one corner to the other. And then you'll either stitch on top of the line or you'll stitch um, using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. The laser can help with that so you don't have to be drawing lines on all of your pieces of fabric. You just uh, use this laser tool. Let me pull my sewing machine over here. It'll be just a second and I'm going to show you. My tool actually came without, it was supposed to come with a Velcro so that you can attach it to your sewing machine and take it off when you need to recharge it. Mine actually did not come with the Velcro, so I'm going to email the company tomorrow and see if they can, I'm sure they can send me just a little piece of Velcro. So I'm using painter's tape for now, just in place of the Velcro. So depending on your sewing machine, you can position it um, in the throat area, on the top of your machine, somewhere where, where, where it will be out of your way. And if you have the Velcro, like I said, you can detach it and reattach it as needed. Again, you likely won't have to use the painter's tape like I'm using, but I, I didn't notice in time to get sent the replacement and I really wanted to talk about um, this product on the show today. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead with the painter's tape. All right, let me turn it on. So I think this will give you an, a good idea even though I have the painter's tape on here. So you just take a second to position the light where you want it. So for instance, if I'm looking for a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll just take a minute to position it. And once you position it, this arm will hold the position. Mm, that looks pretty good to me. In the case of the half square triangles, um, again, you would just position it so it's coming down directly where the needle is. And then you can just stitch on top of the line as you're sewing all of your pieces together. Um, so I thought, while this isn't super inexpensive, I thought it was kind of handy, and especially since I'm working through the Summer Sampler 2020 and some of the blocks use um, half square triangles, I thought this would be really fun to use. And I did like the green light. I found it was easy on the eyes, and I'll definitely be using this for, once I get the Velcro strip, of course, I'll definitely be using this for um, checking where my needle is coming down when I'm stitching, especially top stitching. Um, just, it's nice to have a visual check and sometimes it's hard to see, um, especially late at night when I'm sewing. So um, again, this was the Vivilux 3-in-1 uh, laser light and the version that I shared with you on the show was the one with the green light, although they offer a red light as well. So. I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, do you use a light for your sewing machine? Maybe you have an LED light on your machine. Perhaps you have a light that uh, sits on your tabletop next to your sewing machine. Let me know in the comments if you're using a light to help illuminate your sewing. So um, I 
don't have any new finished projects to share with you just because we actually filmed two videos last week. I was so excited that we filmed two videos. Uh, the first new videos that we filmed in this house and we did two in one week. So um, when we finished up filming on Thursday, I felt really, really awesome. So I don't have sewing finishes to share with you per se, but I bought a couple of fun uh, non-sewing related projects, uh, potential projects that I wanted to share with you. Um, so I'm gonna have Danny switch to the overhead. The first one was recommended by one of our lovely viewers and this suggestion was from Bonnie. Bonnie said she got this adult coloring book and she had a lot of fun uh, filling it in with her markers and it's all animals but sort of like Mandela style so I thought it would be really fun to work on maybe like one little picture every morning or maybe at night if I needed to relax um, and just there's a hundred so there's tons to work through. Um, so this is fun maybe I thought maybe Violet would uh, catch on and want to work on them with me. And I did buy two puzzles. I thought these would be fun family time. And these are definitely more fancy than your everyday, regular, inexpensive puzzles. These are come in really sturdy boxes. I got a unicorn and a dragon. They come in three different sizes, I think. And they are um, from, an, from a company in, I think, uh, Ukraine, perhaps. I'm not entirely sure, but it came in really fun packaging. For display purposes, they sent uh, little easels. And then the puzzles, as you can see, the puzzles are really thick. Um, they're made out of, looks like quarter inch, uh, actually wood pieces. And some of the shapes are really fun. As you can see, this is a dragon shape. This is really awesome. Um, there's some other different shapes of, they're just unique shapes. I found a ton of dragons and castles when I was looking through here. And great colors. I noticed in the little pamphlet I got with my pieces, if you ever lose a piece, all you have to do is email them and they'll send you a replacement. So I thought, well, this isn't necessarily, um, maybe not an everyday type of puzzle, since like I mentioned, it was a little bit more expensive, but if you know someone that's really into puzzles, I thought it would make a fun holiday gift. So there were a few different animals available on the website. Uh, the company's called uh, Unidragon and link is in the description for both the coloring book and the puzzle. And uh, anyway, let's get back to sewing related things. So new fabrics that I've added to my stash this week. I have a bunch of random and assorted prints. So um, Danny's gonna switch back over to the overhead and I'm gonna share them with you. The first one is from a fabric line called Little Darlings. And <laughs> as you can see from the name, um, they are very darling. And these are all animals with sort of, I guess you could say floral crowns. So I'll flip through all the animals so you can see all of them. There are 12 in all. It's a, sort of a panel print. Let me flip it over so you can see the rest of them. And they're super cute. I really love, I mean, I really love all of them. They make good pouches. You could make a, a rectangular pouch with a zipper on top. Um, anyway, super cute. I only got this one print from this particular fabric line. Um, I also got this jungle print um, designed by Dean Russo. While I was searching for the link for the show tonight, I discovered he actually has some fabrics with dogs and a similar artistic uh, nature. So I purchased uh, one of those today on Etsy and I'll show you the dog print as soon as I get that one. These two are digital prints from RJR Fabrics. The fabric line is called Geometry. I thought the colors were really fun. I especially love the hexagon prints. Um, I don't know, perhaps would be good for a bag. It's a good size print. The next one is from Lori Holt, and this is a lighter canvas, so it, it feels really nice. I bet it'll be really nice to work with. There were other sewing themed fabrics in the fabric line. I just picked this one up because I thought, for me personally, I thought it would be the most usable, but there's some vintage sewing pattern related prints in the line as well that I think you might like. Um, the link is in the description so you can see all the rest of the prints. And then these two are from Rifle Paper Company. They do have a little bit of metallic. It's actually gold metallic. And it's from the Primavera fabric line. I only picked up these two prints, but um, the rest of the prints in the line are really great as well. And some of them also feature some of the metallics. And uh, yeah, the, the fabrics are accumulating and apparently I need to sew a little bit faster, but as we finished the two videos last week, I feel like a uh, good chance for sewing faster um, in the coming months. So, um, this Monday, I went to visit my friend, this past Monday, I went to visit my friend Vanessa. Vanessa lives about 30 minutes away from us and uh, she lives on a farm, uh, 11, 
retired show jumpers live on the farm. There's uh, ducks, chickens, three goats, and Vanessa invited me over to just uh, relax in the grass. I took pictures of the horses for a couple of hours, and it was really nice, uh, to be honest, it was nice to leave the house. And so I took a few hundred pictures. Um, I got home and I looked at all of them on the computer and I thought maybe about 30 were really good pictures. I'm only gonna share eight with you because I don't want us to be here all day looking at horse pictures, but Danny's gonna put some of the pictures that I took up on the screen. Um, I, I love looking at these pictures. Um, sometimes at night before I go to bed, I just flip through them again and uh, they really make me smile. And the horses were, um, as you can do, see, doing some fun things like rolling in the grass. Um, and I've been using the camera that Danny got me with uh, um, the lens um, for the wildlife pictures. And it's the same camera that I used to take these horse pictures. So the horses look like they're really close, but some, some of the pictures I took, they were way out in the field. As you can see, this is the field. So uh, yeah, some of them were way out there. So the pictures came out great and I was really happy with them. There's Dudley. So um, yeah, uh, it, was, it was fun going out there. Hopefully I can get out there again soon, take some more pictures. Um, all right, so let's move on to the book review for this week. This week I am talking about uh, the second book I have reviewed from this author, uh, Bernie Tobish. So about a couple of years ago, I reviewed his first book. Um, this one's more of a sewing machine troubleshooting guide, but a lot of the books, um, if you have Bernie's first book, a lot of the pictures in the book, um, some of the content is very similar, but um, there's a difference in this book. So um, if you have his first book, I feel like it's almost not necessary to own the second, but um, if you have neither, I'll talk about the differences and you can decide uh, which one might be best for you in case you're considering getting either of those, these books. So. Um, this is a sewing machine reference tool. There was a quote from the beginning that I wanted to share with you. Bernie is actually a, a sewing machine technician. Um, he's been doing that for 42 years. Um, he wrote in the beginning of the book, in the introduction, over the years, I have come to understand and appreciate that most sewists have a very strong relationship with their sewing machine. The connection is not like one with a toaster, microwave oven, or dishwasher. This is much more personal. I've heard it said that in a fire, the sewing machine would be the first item to be saved. I have seen this relationship be the source of much joy and the cause of many tears. Um, I'm assuming the tears if your sewing machine is not cooperating. So um, the thing that I thought was brilliant about this book is there's a troubleshooting guide at the beginning. So there's eight pages that look just like this. It lists all of the problems. Uh, so for example, in this sec first section, skipping stitches, shredding and breaking thread. The next section, another problem could be loops on the back of the fabric. And then it lists the possible causes for each problem. And then where, what page you go in the book to solve, solve it, where the solution is. So for example, um, let's see, um, damage needle tip. Um, what to do about that, when to change needles, page 72. So that's just an example. And like I said, there's, there's eight pages, so you can find whatever your problem is and find the solution really quickly. Um, like I mentioned, a lot of the pictures and information is similar to his first book. The first book I feel was more substantial, but this one has the more direct um, troubleshooting guides where to find, in a hurry, where to find the solution to your problem. Um, so I really liked the pictures because he used rope and other items to illustrate um, tension, things like tension. You can see clearly um, tension illustrated if you're sh seeing threads on the bottom of your fabric layers or the top, how to fix that, make adjustments. Um, needle size and thread, um, he talks about matching up the correct thread size to your needles that you're using for your project. Um, actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the pages a little bit better. There we go. Um, size of the needle hole, which is really important. Sometimes I have people asking if they should use a denim needle, and sometimes that's the case, but sometimes the denim needle will be making holes that are more large than you want for your project, and he talks about on this page what it looks like when you're making holes that are too big and how to fix that. What could go wrong with your needles? Uh, needle positioning, um, needle too fine for the thread and the project that you're working with. 
uh, troubleshooting thread cutter cutters. I know not every sewing machine has a thread cutter, but um, that's talked about here as well. I just bookmarked a few things, but obviously there's a lot more content in this particular book. Um, I really liked in his first book, he had these two pictures, which I remembered. When to adjust the pressure on your sewing machine foot. Too much pressure will result in the top fabric. As you can see the green fabric on top, it kind of slid and it's not aligned with the black fabric. That means too much pressure. And then obviously the ideal, what you want is after you've sewn both layers of fabric to be aligned, which they are in this picture. So that was my favorite um, instruction from the first book at least. When to adjust your stitches. He has pictures of different uh, decorative stitches, buttonholes, um, what it should look like, what it shouldn't look like, and what to do to fix it. So um, this book is over 100 pages. There's lots of helpful information. Like I said, this is kind of the book you might want to keep by your sewing machine if you're having a problem in the middle of your project. Look at the beginning of the book, find the page number where you need to go to fix it, and then get it taken care of. So um, both his first book and his second book are really wonderful. Um, no need to have both books though. I feel like it's either one or the other. Um, this one for if you want a quick solution and the other book is more of a, um, uh, sort of reminds me of a textbook from school. So lots of helpful information. There were good co full color set photos in that book I just showed you, but the other one has even more. So again, link in the description. I linked to both Bernie's books. Um, the one I shared with you today was however called the sewing machine reference tool. So I have another question for you. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, do you ever read your sewing machine manual to brush up on things? Um, or did you pretty much look at it when you first got it and then file it away in the drawer and never look at it since? So I'm curious because sometimes I see people, um, especially when I used to teach classes in person, they brought their sewing machine manual to class and they referenced it for um, if they needed to brush up on something in particular with their sewing machine. So I'm curious if you look at your, your manual every once in a while um, just to get some more um, added information about your machine. So um, today uh, I'm really happy to announce uh, we finally have the Rockstar bag video available for you. Um, if you have the pattern already, uh, we are selling the video individually. If you would like both the pattern and the video or maybe just the pattern by itself, those are all available now. And we shot a quick like two minute video the other day showing you the features of the bag. So Danny's gonna play that video right now. Hey bag makers, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. And today I'm really excited to introduce you to the Rockstar bag video. So the Rockstar bag is a pattern that I designed a few years ago. And today we finally have a video available to accompany it. So I thought I'd walk you through some of the features of this fun bag. So it's got a very detailed front flap with a diagonal zipper and this is actually a functioning pocket so you can actually store small items in the, the zippered flap. It has a magnetic snap in the flap and this also serves as a larger pocket so cell phones or other items will fit inside that front pocket. As well as front and back handles, it has a removable strap on the side so you can remove the side strap or clip it back on as you prefer. I'll walk you through how to make and attach uh, piping for the side panels of your bag. This is just optional, but I feel like it gives the bag uh, a nice punch and really makes the feature fabric pop. And there are two zipper pockets in the lining, so one on each side. And this particular bag is finished with binding, which I feel gives the bag sort of a nice skeleton and helps it hold its shape nicely. So. The PDF pattern is full of full color step photos and in the video I'll walk you through every single step from start to finish. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that look at the Rockstar bag. I know many of you have been waiting for the video and the next sew along will be for the Rockstar bag that'll be over in the Sew Sweetness Facebook group. Um, so I'll be announcing information on that um, as it gets closer to the sew along date. So. Uh, Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show, we'd like to invite all the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know that you're part of the So Sweet Sweetness squad. Uh, we really appreciate you being here, especially many of you are watching every single Sunday or every single day during the week after the live show. So uh, we really appreciate you. Thanks for being part of our community and uh, we're so glad you're here.
Um, all right, uh, I'm going to be answering questions live in just a minute. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments, um, type your question, wherever you're watching the live show, either in Facebook or YouTube, it can be a sewing related question, question about a notion or tool, general bag making related question. Go ahead and type your question in the comments now. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. Um, that was an $80 gift certificate to SoSweetness.com. And last week's winner is Susan uh, McQuown, um, M-C-Q-U-O-N-E. So congratulations to you, Susan. I've contacted you on social media and just waiting to hear back from you so that we can get you your gift certificate. Congratulations again. All right, Danny, take it away uh, with the questions. Yvonne says, is that fabric print still available? That's a great question. Um, this is, the fabric is called um, Art Theory. It's designed by Allison Glass. The print is from a few years ago. You might be able to still find some online or at your local quilt shop. However, this particular print is being reprinted by Allison Glass's fabric company, Andover Fabrics, and um, that uh, fabric line is coming out in November. So this print is also available with like a white um, neutral background and then there will be some other fun coordinating prints that are brand new in the line that's coming out in November so um, again that particular print the name of it is called art theory um, Paula says what level of difficulty is the rockstar bag I'd say it's an intermediate level bag um, there's a lot of features in it that uh, can potentially be optional there's uh, this since there's front handles if you decide to leave the side strap off you can uh, piping is optional, although I think it looks pretty cool, and I'll walk you through in the video um, two different methods for installing the piping. One um, you can use with any sewing machine foot, and then I also show you how I install the piping with my piping foot on my sewing machine. So I, I walk you through both of those in the video. Um, let's see what else. There's the top zipper, there's two zipper pockets in the lining. Um, Danny and I were talking the other day about, um, a, Danny suggested I design a bag pattern that has uh, basically every, every feature that you, you could use uh, technique wise, zippers, magnetic snaps, uh, swivel clips on the straps, zipper pockets, and we had just finished filming the video and I said, you know, the video we just finished filming, that's, that's probably what I, suggest, I would suggest because it has all those different techniques in there. Uh, installing purse hardware, there's purse feet on that bag, so there's a lot going on with the Rockstar bag, but um, I think it's a really fun project. Next question, Sarah. Oh, sorry, I uh, thought it was the same question. <laughs> uh, Donna says, if you have the pattern, how much is the video? Uh, we do sell the video uh, separately for $9 if you do already have the pattern and would like to take advantage of the video plus pattern bundle, which is $15. Uh, just email me after you purchase the video separately and I'm happy to uh, give you a refund for the difference in price to make your pattern and video come out to $15. Michelle says, nice, how can you make the opening larger or wider? Um, I think it, I don't know, that would take a lot of modification. I think that would be potentially another pattern unless you um, increase the pattern piece, the main panel pattern piece, which is the front and the back of the bag. You could increase that on the fold you would also need to increase uh, the length of the bottom panel and then also the length of the zipper. I think those would be the only two modifications. Oh no, you'd have to increase these two guys in the front as well. So a few modifications, but if you wanted to modify the pattern to make your bag longer, you could do that. And in fact, over the years, I think I've seen a few people do that, um, make their bag longer. Um, I just received my order from you. The cork fabric is amazing and I'm so happy with the speed and accuracy of my delivery. I'm happy it arri arrived quickly. I'm really happy that you're in love with your cork. Um, we are still seeing some delays with the postal service um, out of our control, but we are shipping out packages usually within 24 hours, except obviously over the weekend. So we're working really hard to get your order shipped out quickly. Um, we normally do, but we are also aware that uh, the postal service is encountering delays and so, um, you know, we'd like to get it to you faster, but we're doing uh, as much as we can um, on our side of things, at least. Misty says, I've been searching for the video where you talked about um, family board games, but no luck. What keywords could I try? 
why don't you email me after the show? I'm thinking it might have been one of our Christmas shows, but I'm not 100% on that. But let me do some digging. Um, my email address is sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. I'll see if I can try to find the video that that was on. Yeah, I feel like it's one of the holiday videos. Um, Gail says, how do you adjust the pressure? Um, it might be, it might be one of those things that you'll, you'll need to look at your sewing machine manual because um, every sewing machine will be different. On my particular sewing machine, um, I have a dial on the, the top that helps me adjust the press, presser foot pressure. Um, but yeah, check your sewing machine manual and it should, should be listed in there. Bonnie says, have you ever thought about putting your photos on bags? Um, I'd like to, but designing my own fabric seems so intimidating. So you have a few options. Um, I do have a video on my YouTube channel on how to print uh, your own labels onto fabric and I did in that demonstration I did print uh, pictures on fabric these were eight and a half by eleven inch pieces of fabric that I just ran through my printer however there's a website called Spoonflower at spoonflower.com and I've had over the years several pieces of fabric custom printed um, I've had friends that have printed uh, pictures onto fabric at Spoonflower. You can print uh, quilt labels, all sorts of things, whatever you want on Spoonflower. You can have it custom printed or you can purchase uh, designs that already exist on the website. So Spoonflower is a really great website um, and there's lots of different fabric substrates, um, knits. Um, I'm sure they have some sort of, they have wallpaper, they have quilting cotton, um, flannel, all sorts of things on Spoonflower. It's a great website. Donna says, do you always need to box the corners of a bag and have a gusset when you use an inset zipper closure? Um, you don't always. In fact, I think I have at least a couple of uh, patterns with a recessed zipper where the corners are not boxed. Um, if that's not uh, where you're going with your question, though, you can feel free to email me with more specifics after the show. And again, my email is uh, sarah at sosweetness.com and that's sarah with no H and I'm happy to help you uh, privately via email. All right, Linda says, why call it the Rockstar bag? Uh, I think I designed this pattern in 2014. I don't know, at the time I just thought it was a cool looking edgy bag. In my original version, I used a lot of, I didn't do it in this particular bag, but in the original version, I used a ton of rivets across the flap, like rivets all over the place. So it made me, I don't know, it sort of had that Rockstar vibe to it, uh, at least the original one that I made. Roxy says, do you like sewing canvas fabric or just plain cotton fabrics? That's a great question. So it depends on the bag. Uh, I do use quilting cotton for a lot of projects, but some bags like, actually I have two behind me that I made in, in canvas fabric. So this is the Coalition duffel bag. This one is made in canvas fabric. And let me pull this other one out. Um, this is the Amethyst Project bag. This one's also made it a, in a canvas print. Uh, my linings were still quilt, quilting cotton for both of these, but I just, I guess it depends on if I find um, a canvas print that I really like. Like for example, this one that I shared with you earlier, this is canvas. And um, yeah, I definitely don't shy away from working with canvas. It just depends on uh, what catches my eye, I guess, at the fabric store. Um, Ann says, what are the measurements? Oh, that's a good question. I don't have the pattern pages off the top of my head. Do I have a ruler around here? Yeah, I do. All right, the Rockstar bag is 11 inches long, nine inches high, and about six and a half inches deep. Um, Joanne says, do you ship to Australia? We do ship worldwide. However, since the pandemic started, we're finding that packages leaving the United States are taking a really long time. I think the except, well, one exception would be Canada since it's relatively close by. And I think perhaps some packages going to Canada might be able to, to leave the country on a truck. However, a lot of international packages overseas, we're seeing uh, two to three months or more. There's a couple reasons for this. Uh, one of the reasons is there's limited commercial flights leaving the country. In fact, some countries are not allowing uh, flights to come in, um, except for residents. Um, I think New Zealand, that's the case in New Zealand, perhaps some other countries. Another reason for the delay is we're seeing delays uh, customs for our country uh, before it leaves the United States. There's a delay there and there's also another delay 
when it reaches the destination country because it's waiting in line for customs for the customs agents to process all the packages. So lots of delays, unfortunately, during the pandemic for international packages. I wish I wasn't, it wasn't so, but it's just uh, what's going on right now in the world. Sharon says, can you make the Rockstar bag in vinyl? What would you recommend as far as lining if I went with using vinyl? I do recall over the years seeing a few versions made in vinyl. Um, I think you're probably okay to still use quilting cotton for the lining if you'd like to. Um, just be aware to consider the thickness of the vinyl that you're using because uh, the bag is turned through that top zipper opening and um, especially, I don't know, I don't know that I'd make it in marine vinyl. I think that might be a little too thick. Debbie says, do you have a pattern suggestion for an adult size lunchbox? Um, I do have a few lunchbox patterns. I'm not sure if they're big enough for what you have in mind. Uh, the peas and corn lunch bags, that's two different styles of lunch bags. And also from Minikin season, um, Minikin season one, there's the morsel lunch bag. I really love that one. That one has a recessed zipper and um, like cutout handles at the top. I've seen people make other bags for lunch bags, like the tortoise bag, but uh, those are not specifically lunch bags. They were just uh, sort of modified to serve as a lunch bag by putting some insulated interfacing on the lining side. Erica says, what type of leather would you use for the Rockstar bag? Um, not marine vinyl, vinyl, but I think other uh, leathers or vinyls I think might be okay for that particular project. I haven't personally made it in anything besides quilting cotton, so I can't speak from personal experience, but I have seen them on social media. Renee says, Sarah, have you ever thought of a cross-stitch pattern integrated into one of your bags? I have not, but that would be really cool. Uh, I guess I'll have to consider it since I've been working on a lot of cross-stitch lately. Um, I'll think about it and I'll let you know. Um, I guess I can ask uh, those in the audience as well, have you ever used cross-stitch for um, a feature on your bag or pouch that you've sewn? Let us know in the comments if you have. RC says, do you apply shape flex before Decoville or the other way around, what is the best? So uh, there's two different versions of Decoville, Decoville light and Decoville heavy. I've, I have applied shape flex to the wrong side of the fabric before applying the Decoville, but I also have not. Um, sometimes I use it um, in, co in combination with foam interfacing. So if I'm working with three levels, I'll usually fuse the Decoville heavy to the foam interfacing and then attach the fabric. You can attach the fabric to either side, either the side where the Decoville is or the opposite side, the, the foam side, either one will work. Um, I have made a few projects with the Decoville light and I did not use Shape Flex, I just used the Decoville light and I think I was happy with the smoothness in the finished uh, project. So there's a few different options. Um, if you'd like some more specific advice, if you're working on a particular pattern, um, you can feel free to email me and I'm happy to help further with that. Carol says, your handles on the Rockstar bag look so nice and firm, mine always seem floppy. Are you using Kona cotton for the straps or something with more body? Um, for this particular bag, I did use black Kona that I had in my stash. I know black Kona is getting hard to find right now, um, but I just used uh, black Kona with Pell and Shape Flex. That's all I did with the straps. And they're sort of faux um, piped straps. I sewed them rather than just being flat straps. I have two Rockstar bags up here, so let me show you the difference. So this Rockstar bag was made by Christy from Rock Baby Scissors, and you can probably see that the handles in the front are uh, just regular flat handles. She made these using faux leather. And in the pattern, there, I, I give you an option for making sort of like a, a faux rolled handle. And so these were sewn flat like Christy's bag, and then I folded them in the center one more time, and then I stitched them down to make it more, um, I guess, detailed looking uh, for the handles. But either way, you can leave yours flat or um, as I show in the pattern and video, uh, folded and top stitched one additional time. Kathy says, what size piping cord do you use in your bags? Uh, the Rockstar bag, I use Dritz 5 30 seconds of an inch cotton cording. Um, if you do decide to get the video, I link to that uh, cotton cording in the video. We do have it on our website as well. Um, I know it sounds like an odd number for a measurement, but again, it's uh, Dritz 5 30 seconds of an inch uh, cotton cording. That's what I use for that bag. Jessica says, what, uh, would OD coat work on cotton for the picnic cooler? It for sure will. I do have a video on OD coat on my YouTube channel and I would recommend um, rough cutting your fabrics slightly larger than your pattern pieces before applying the OD coat because there's, uh, 
I mean a very minimal amount of shrinkage but you'll want to iron everything nice and flat before you cut to your final size that you that you need in the pattern and the rest of the details should be in the video. Um, Sarah says uh, answer about which social Sunday that mentioned games it is December 22nd 2019. I'm gonna write that down because I'm not gonna remember after the show. Thank you so much you're a whiz uh, at finding that information I really appreciate it. Carrie says, does the Rockstar have a drop-in lining? It does not. Uh, the, Rops, the Rockstar bag is finished with lining, although I don't see why you couldn't do a drop-in lining instead. Um, Donna says, um, I have not liked the Spoonflower flower fabric in the past. Uh, I do not know the cotton has changed, which I, which I have not tried. Um, they did have in the past the Kona cotton on Spoonflower. More recently, they have what they're calling petal cotton, and I find, I'm not sure if you pre-washed your Spoonflower printed fabric before you used it, but I find that pre-washing um, printed fabric makes it a little more um, supple or feel a little bit nicer, less, a little less stiff. Peggy says, do you have a fishing tackle bag pattern? Um, my brother's a fisherman and I'm trying to think what type of, you know what, I think perhaps the Sheffield tool bag might be good for that. In fact, I think I did see several people make the Sheffield tool bag for either, either a hunting bag or I think maybe for fishing, perhaps, perhaps I'm thinking. Um, Denise says, what about a lunch bag for a bento box? Um, that's a good question. I know because I've done it before, I know the mar morsel lunch bag for Minikin season one, um, Last year, the kids, I, I had these glass containers with lids that are very similar to a bento box. I can slide those in, but when the bag is uh, standing up, um, you know, with, on its bottom, um, the bento bags is the bento box is sideways. Uh, in my case, that wasn't a problem since the lids were tight sealing. Um, I'm not sure what type of bento boxes you have. That's an option. Um, perhaps the Crimson and Clover train case. That way you wouldn't have to have the bento box on its side. Depending on your measurements of your bento box, the Crimson and Clover might work for you as well. Diana says, can you substitute webbing for the handles? Yeah, you sure can. Um, just about every bag uh, can be substituted for either webbing or um, inserting webbing inside um, strap fabric. Actually, I'm working on a new pattern right now where I'll be using webbing inserted into the strap fabric. I do have a video on my YouTube channel. I don't remember the exact name of it. Um, I think if you search nylon strapping on my YouTube channel, I have a free video showing you how to do that with the fabric with the nylon strapping inside. Cynthia says, uh, can I use a number five zipper? Actually, the Rockstar bag that Christy from Rock Baby Scissors made, um, she's got the, the handbag zipper on it. I did make mine with uh, the number three zipper. Um, just because I wanted all my zippers to be um, exactly matching. Um, but yes, uh, I see from Christie's bag that it's possible. Uh, Speed Bully says, what fabric would you use for a sewing machine bag and how do you make it strong enough? So uh, it might be what I'm working on right now. Uh, I should have something for you on that soon. I'm just using quilting cotton for mine, um, just because it's a particular fabric that I'd like to use. Uh, canvas fabric would be great as well. Um, yeah, I guess stay tuned for more information on that. <laughs> All right, Danny's calling on the question. So I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but you can always email me. My email is sarah at sweetness.com. and that's Sarah with no H. Also, um, regarding that um, August challenge with the animal fabric, if you have difficulty uploading your photo to the challenge, please uh, don't hesitate to email me. We can help you get the photo on there if you're having trouble. We don't, we don't want anyone to be left out if they have any technical difficulties, so be sure to do that if you're having any trouble. Um, I do have a giveaway for you tonight. Um, the giveaway is for the Rockstar Bag Acrylic Templates. Uh, we should have those up in the shops shortly, um, but that's the giveaway prize for tonight, the acrylic template to make that Rockstar Bag. And my question to enter the the giveaway all you need to do is answer this question in the comments i'll be choosing one randomly drawn winner at the end of the day this saturday and announcing the winner on next sunday's show and my question is what do you listen to or watch while you sew so let me know in the comments lately i've been listening to um, malcolm gladwell's podcast and um, yesterday i started listening to uh, one of his audiobooks called talking to strangers so um, I find that I am working more um, steadily when I have something to keep me occupied, like a podcast. So 
Um, let me know your answer in the, the comments. Looking forward to seeing what everyone is listening to and watching. Uh, so that's it for me tonight. I hope you have a great week. Happy sewing and bye everybody.